now we'll concentrate upon one very very important concept that concept is called as a line of support whenever we are designing cylindrical pressure vessel then this line of support concept is of utmost importance so we must understand what do you mean by line of support so what do you mean by line of support it is nothing but it is a support location where we consider that the cylinder is supported or separated means what let's say i am having a uh, uh, 10 meter as a length of the cylinder and uh, in external pressure calculation i come to know that let's say the other thickness whatever i have assumed let's say 8 mm is not sufficient so there are two methods to us one is by increasing the thickness we can increase the capacity of that uh, vessel to sustain the external pressure that is option number 1 option number 2 we can add stiffener rings so by adding stiffener rings we are cutting this cylinder in the different different sections and only those sections we are analyzing under vacuum so that separation is nothing but the that uh, stiffener will also one of the line of support we can see. so there are some support locations which are available in the vessel so one by one we are going to see that so it is a support location where we consider that the cylinder is supported or separated following are the locations to be considered as a line of support so let's start one by one what are the various line of supports which have been mentioned in the code so so we can see over here there is one horizontal vessel having the dish end so it is not a open cylinder it's not just a cylinder it is having the dish end so what will happen whenever this type of arrangement is there then we are considering the line of support is located in the dish end part so whenever at the time of designing the shell uh, for external pressure we are not just considering the length of the shell we are considering the effective length from line of support to line of support what do you mean by effective length what do you mean by line of support for this case let's have a close look into this so here the code has defined that it is a circumferential line on the head so it has to be a circumferential line on the head excluding the conical head let's say at one third the depth of the head at the one third the depth of the head from the head tangent line so let's say we know that in case of dish end we are having a tan line and then the sf that is straight face will start so there is a tan line there is a weld line so whenever it is getting attached to the shell that line is called as a weld line and after as a from where the knuckle will start that point is called as a tan line so here they have said that the circumferential line on the head the line of support is nothing but a circumferential line on the head which is located at one third of the height of the head from the tan line so let's have a close look into this let's say this is our tan to tan line this is our ta tangent line this is our tangent line then this height from the tan line to the inside of the or the inner uh, surface of that dish end is called as the depth of that head it is called as the depth of that head so let's say this is h that is depth of the head which is starting from the tan line till the inner face of your dish end it is not for, uh, till the od it is till the id or we can say inside crown or inside inner surface of that uh, dish end so h is nothing but the inside depth of that head now this tl to tl is called as a tangent line or tan to tan length and this h is nothing but the depth of the head support so now these lines which are the imaginary or we can say hypothetical lines which are considered or defined as a line of support in case of the distant is attached to the shell so if shell is attached to distant it is imagined that there are these hypothetical yellow color lines these are called as a line of support and its location is at a distance these are the line of support and their location is at the distance of one third of the depth of the head we have, we have seen that depth of the head means tan line to the inner uh, inner crown of that uh, distance so that is nothing but the depth of that dish in case of uh, ellipsoidal head it is id by 4 which because it is 2 as to 1 semi ellipsoidal so it is id by 4 so one third of that at a distance from this tan line we have to draw one hypothetical line and that line we can call it as a line of support when the shell is attached to the dish end so whenever shell dish end uh, joint is there this 
length of this uh, shell what we have to consider in the design will not be only shell length or even not the tan length it is the length from the one line of support to the another line of support and here the line of support is located at one third of the depth of that head so it is very important now the second uh, line of support which is a stiffener ring that meets the requirement of ug29 what is there in ug29 they have given that if we have to consider the stiffener ring which is separating the cylinder virtually into two or into multiple parts that also needs to satisfy the requirement of ug29 where they have given the moment of inertia requirement so we have to calculate the required moment of inertia and we have to give the uh, then we have to check the available moment of inertia and if the available moment of inertia is not sufficient then we need to imply an stiffener ring and that stiffener ring must have the moment of inertia which will be more than the requirement so that condition is given in ug29 if that stiffener ring satisfy that moment of inertia requirement then we can consider that as a line of support if it is not satisfying the moment of inertia requirement then we cannot consider it as a line of support for the design purpose so whenever we are having the stiffener rings like this then these stiffener rings will behave like a line of support so we virtually now not considering the entire length of the vessel while designing the cylinder now we have break the cylinder in three parts so now we will analyze this cylinder separately this cylinder separately this cylinder as separate with individual length from one line of support to another line line of support so in this case it will be from the center line of this stiffener to the edge by three distance from the tan line so this length will be utilized in calculation for this cylinder then stiffener to stiffener length will be utilized in calculation for the middle portion of this cylinder and again on the left side from this stiffener to the edge by three distance from tan line that will be the length we will consider in external pressure calculation so here the stiffener ring can also be a line of support which can support uh, support that vessel at that location and for design purpose we are considering that it is splitting the cylinder in those many half then a jacket closure of a jacketed vessel that meets the requirement of 9-5 in mandatory appendix 9-5 jacket design is given there they have given the end closure requirements of all the uh, kinds of uh, what we can say jacketed covers so if it satisfy that requirement then we can consider that cover also as a line of support if it is not satisfying that then that cannot be considered as a line of support so when we are having a jacketed closure like this so let's say there is a flat end closure to this uh, jacket so that flat end is nothing but a stiffener ring so that's how it is so this stiffener ring is nothing but a line of support but to behave like a line of support it also needs to satisfy the requirement of 9-5 so here for jacketed closure this end closure will behave like a line of support so we have seen that in case of line of support from descent to descent that is edge by three distance from tan line to tan line that will be a line of support that distance or that location is line of support stiffener if provided then that must satisfy ug29 then those also can be line of support and the jacket covers which satisfied 9-5 requirement those can also be a line of support then very important and very confusing term which people are often get confused about that is a cone to cylindrical junction is a line of support or not a line of support so whenever we are designing any vessel under uh, external pressure and if we are having the cone so the code has given us two options or rather we can say three options one option is this we are not considering the cone as a separate element we are considering the cone as a part of shell only so what we are doing we are not giving any existence to this cone we are considering it is a shell only so for the designing of this large diameter shell what length we should consider edge by three distance on this side then we will not consider this as a line of support then we'll directly go till this end and till this total length will be considered as the length for the designing of this diameter the same thing happens with this small diameter if the cone to cylindrical junction is not a line of support we are not considering the effect of this cone again here the length will not be till this because it is not a line of support so the cylinder is imagined to exceed 
or uh, it is imagined to have the length till the next line of support so from this line of support to this line of support so when we are designing this cylinder in that case we have to consider entire length from h by 3 to h by 3 distance for this cylinder also we have to take the entire length so please do remember if we are not considering cone to cylindrical junction as not a line of support so a cone to cylindrical junction or a cone to cylindrical junction of a toric conical head or the section that satisfy the moment of inertia requirement of 1-8 so if we considering now the other option where we are considering it is a line of support so we are considering the cone as a separate element this cylinder as a separate element and this cylinder as a separate element so to consider this cone to cylindrical junction as a line of support which is hypothetically says that we are cutting this vessel in three parts so for that purpose there has to be a enough moment of inertia available at these two junctions so that requirement has been given in mandatory appendix appendix 1 sub clause 8 so we need to satisfy the moment of inertia requirement of 1-8 if we are considering cone to cylindrical junction as a line of support the so cone to cylindrical junctions are these these can be a line of support but in that case it needs to satisfy the requirements of moment of inertia as per 1-8 there they have given what is the required and available moment of inertia if the available moment of inertia is not sufficient between the cone and the cylinder then in that case we have to add on the Uh, moment of inertia in the form of some ring, and that ring must be located at a very close distance for, from this cylinder to cone junction. So that distance is also specified. Let's say I am considering it as a line of support and providing the stiffener ring something over here. Whether that is going to stiffen this junction, no. So that's why they have given uh, one formula. In that, they have given the minimum distance to be maintained when cone to cylindrical junction is considered as a line of. support so this is a line of support concept 